Welcome, Basics families and players. Uh, this is another podcast that we're excited to publish. The topic here is something we call summer sanity. Uh, the idea is there is entirely too much organized basketball in the summer. And we really do believe at Basics that less can be more. Uh, these kids, many of them get burned out, and it's important that there be some basketball, but we believe uh, organized basketball has expectations with it and all sorts of uh, elements that in the summer months would be better directed towards you know more a larger group of activities, not just basketball all the time. So we've got Coach Ernie here with us. We're uh, looking forward to this podcast. Yeah, and, and it's good to be here again. And this is a topic that um, is so relevant to myself as a, as a basketball coach and, and ourselves as trainers, you know, we talk about how do kids improve, how do kids get better, and and there's really a, a the reality is a lot of what goes on in the summertime with um, young kids, but especially you know middle school, high school kids. We're talking about how that doesn't really help them. I mean, there's there's a lot of time spent, and yet um, the improvement sometimes isn't there. So. And then plus the schedules are crazy. That's why we, you know, this is sort of an, an insanity type of, of thing, you know, from June, especially June, but even into the months of July and August, that um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of problems, a lot of things that that we'd love parents to, especially parents and kids, to think about. You know, the uh, something I've heard from parents and coaches, and I've heard it for years. We've been around since 2006. Is in the summertime, if we don't do all this activity, if we don't sign up for A camp and B camp and C camp and D league, then we're going to be behind because everybody else is doing it. So many of these programs are not, they're not winning programs to begin with. A lot of the records over the past decade or so are, you know, they're, they're around 500 at best for some of these programs. So our, our belief here is choose something perhaps that's different. I mean, and we're not saying that basics is the answer, although we have a lot of different uh, services that can fit in here. We'll talk about um, some solutions that we see to this problem. But the, the herd mentality is extremely strong. If they're doing it, then maybe we should be doing it. Think for yourself. Think what really is best for the kids. And the, the topic of where we are, Michigan, is going to come up in a few minutes as well, because this is a unique place, Michigan, in terms of the natural beauty, in terms of all the things that are here in this state. I'm not from this area. I'm from Connecticut. So I'm going to bring that back up in a few minutes. Sure. I think uh, the the phrase or the quote that we like to use sometimes, that activity is, does not always mean achievement, you know, where we feel like if we're not doing something as a team or we're not – and this would be coming from like maybe coaches or if they feel like if we don't jam pack the schedule and we don't have all this activity, we're not going to be achieving. And in reality, you see that happen where there's all this activity and you come back in November when the season starts and it's like, oh, wait, you know, these guys aren't that much better than they were when we started the summertime. So, you know, what are, what are some of these missing links? And just just the, the phrase activity does not always equal achievement is a real big thing because we have a lot of kids who are super active and overactive, you know, doing things. And then unfortunately, it, as reality is, it doesn't always mean improvement and achievement. Yeah. Just quickly, uh, there's a, we just came back from Sandy Hook at Newtown, Connecticut, and uh, right. there's, a, there's a soccer organization there in Newtown. And this, one of the parents was recounting this for me. And soccer is a huge sport and it's particularly big in this area of Connecticut. And apparently the Newtown area has bought into this, they brought this new guy in whose approach is completely different than everybody else's. They're not playing any leagues, they're not playing any games, they're just working on basic skill development, especially at the ages, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 years of age, 13. Constant reps, constant skill development. Well, they've been doing this for a couple of years now, and these kids are kicking it in the high school area teams. They just have sharper skills. So now the the, the, the uh, community had to buy into this. There was flack for this. What do you mean we're not playing in games? What do you mean we're not going to go play in some league? We've always done this. Well, now you can see what's happening with these kids. Now it's a different sport, but it's applicable to basketball. Right, right. So we had some topics, we had some categories we were kind of were talking about like what we wanted to get into and what makes summer so insane, especially 
we're, I guess we're focusing on basketball yeah. um, primarily, um, but even other sports that certainly can apply. So, I mean, there's the, there's the, there's the school sponsored stuff. There's the things that are the schedules created to, um, by the coaches, by the schools to, to kind of, you know, be the, be, be the thing that we feel like you have to do in order to not get behind your, your potential competition for spots or your teammates in the future. Then there's the AAU stuff, then there's the team camps. All those are kind of grouped together. With, I know we're gonna, we're gonna hit on a few of those things, but that makes um, the summer is just such a crazy time for, for parents and kids. Uh, well, you know, I've been around since 06 doing this, and I get, I get my hands on schedules. Parents send me stuff and go, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Uh, I did get, each year I get uh, different summer camp schedules from different programs, right. and some of them are, this is why the name, it's called Summer Sanity. There's a couple of schools that have programs that literally run, we just counted after school lets out in June, 22 of the 29 days in June are programmed. There's something going on, whether it's a scrimmage or weightlifting yeah. or traveling to uh, some college team camp. It's, it's too much. So now it's difficult for parents because how, how, do, they, how do they say no? They're gonna, we, the phrase we use is it's optionally mandatory, right? right? It's really not mandatory because they, they can't make a kid go. It's like against the rules is to insist that the kid player, player goes. But the unwritten rule is, well, if you don't go, you might be behind the eight ball. You know, I have a hard time getting that because to me, the only thing that matters is November. Uh, the first Monday in November is for high school girls and the second Monday in November is for high school boys. That's all that matters. Everything between this point in time and that point in time is preparation. Some of that preparation should be going to the beach or should be riding a bike or, and we'll talk about this one player in a minute, you know, this is one of the best players in the state and she works, I'll talk about it now, she works on her game at summer camp. I'm sorry, at uh, the, the campground. They go to the campground, she's working on her game, she's ball handling on the driveway, then they go fishing. So there's ways to improve and, and recharge the batteries. Right. I mean, and then when you are, are so jam-packed with your schedule, you can have this. There's Burnout is a constant topic of conversation. You know, kids burning out. And it's such a sad phrase, but, it, I mean, it happens all the time. So when, when a kid goes from a, that long winter basketball season, you know, it runs from November to March, and, it's, and then you have maybe a – even there's things in the spring, but then all June hits and school's out, and then you are immediately inundated with, with all these optionally mandatory things, feeling like you have to do this and that. Um, burnout is a real thing. I mean, there's, there's just the other day I had a, a father of a young a young kid who, who was real. I mean, he's a you know elementary student, and, and it's like telling him that, um, telling me that he just wants to be really careful to not burn. His his son out on <laughs> basketball at you know at this at age, such a age nine yeah right <laughs> and and it, two things came to mind that it's wow it's really good that he's aware of this problem because some some I know that there's you know people out there who don't even think that that's a, a real thing or that the, it's just it's weak mindedness if you if you if you burn out but uh, so that was good on his part but then it's also sad that the reality of, of our current state of affairs with especially with youth sports is that. That's true. That even at the, you know third grade, you can you can be burning out on a sport. Like you know, kids should play multiple sports. Kids should be doing other things besides sports. And especially in the summertime in Michigan, you should be doing things that sort of rejuvenate your your love of the game. And and that just I think of my own experience. I, I was a three sport athlete in high school, and I uh, soccer was a fall sport. And so the summertime was kind of there was more of a sense of urgency for soccer because that was the first thing I was going to play off of summer. But I remember taking about a month off, and, and it was in June, and I played a little basketball, did some tennis, played played a little soccer early, I think, it, but then really just did summer activities. And, and this, I was in high school. I was going in to uh, be a varsity soccer player. And I remember coming back in July for some of the soccer workouts to get ready for the season, basically after not touching a ball for over a month. And I remember playing those first nights and feeling, like, really good, feeling really excited and good about not only you know getting back into the sport, but actually playing well, like physically and mentally, I was stronger and I was better. 
And I just know that part of the reason, probably the biggest reason, was because I took time away and, and, and did things that made me stronger in other ways, you know, and, you know, even other sports can make you, obviously make you more athletic and bigger, faster, stronger, but, but even just doing other things that mentally make you better. Um, and so that was my own personal experience. And I wish that could happen more. And I think sometimes people view taking time away as, well, you're getting behind. Well, in reality, it's the opposite. Sometimes you actually can come back better. Rejuvenated is a good word. And Especially so, in the summer. I mean, and we'll, now comes my point that I was excited to talk about, which is the state of Michigan. I'm not from here. Right. Uh, I've lived all over the country. And here I've been for the last 16 years, and I just think it's one of the most amazing states I've, in the Union. I've just never seen such a beautiful place with so many activities. So you have this limited window here in the summer, basically June 1st to maybe the middle of September, where the weather's gorgeous. Of course, school starts back up at Labor Day, so you could extend that even into October, but that doesn't pertain to this discussion. Why would anybody go and spend two, three days in some hot gym have to pay for the hotel. This leads into the summer team camps that we're about to discuss. Why would they do that? Why Why not just play basketball all the time, compete, maybe have open gyms? Um, uh, I know the, the playground is, is a, something from the past, but there are playgrounds around. Uh, and then just go to the beach or ride your bike or lift and train on your own. That's what I did all summer long. I know it's a different time and different era, but as you just talked about, I, when, when basketball season rolled around in the middle of October, prepping for that November tryout, I was frothing at the mouth. I could not wait to get after it because right. I hadn't been, you know, playing game after game after game after game for the past four months. Not to mention, and Izzo talks about this, the uh, injury the injury rates are so much higher now from overuse. So that's a whole different topic to parents. Just be aware, right? Listen, have the kids listen to their bodies. If, if we just had a, a fine young player just blow her ACL out, she plays all the time. She's done for the year and maybe into next. So just be aware of that as well. Sure. I mean, getting into some of the things that happen in the summer that are kind of insane, right? These, these massive um, team camps where you go and you're one of 30 teams and you're, so the gym is full of hundreds of kids and, and your team is there, which is kind of a nice thing. You're building camaraderie with your, your classmates. And I think that's a, that is a positive. And then, but you know, if, if you're wondering, is this a good place for my son or daughter? Like is, if you go to, if you happen to go, to, a lot of times these team camps are, um, away from family sometimes, so you don't always get to go to actually look at what, what it's like. But um, if, if you get a chance to watch a team camp, ask yourself, do you, do you kind of, uh, do, you, do you see hundreds of kids in the gym? Do you see them playing way more, it's like a lot more games than it is just training and skill development? Okay, what's the player to coach ratio, right? What's the, um, what's the ratio of time that they're spent sitting versus playing? And unfortunately, a lot of these um, a lot of these camps involve a lot of sitting during the games. Okay, a lot of uh, a lot of just back to back to back gameplay, and then you leave and you say, okay, we had, we won a couple games. It was fun, but did we really achieve? Did we? We were very active. We spent a lot of time running up and down the floor, and we spent a, a, a good amount of money. But did we achieve? And so that's a that's been a something that we see a lot of um, are these team camps, and that and that's involved. That, you know, there's travel, there's money spent, but just the scene that you see when you walk into those gyms, it just it strikes it strikes me the wrong way. And, and a lot of times, and we hope that if you go and see those things, you know what what do you see as the issues here? You said it earlier. Never confuse activity with achievement. That's Coach Wooden, and then one that. I've kind of parlayed off of that is never confuse competition with competitive growth. They're completely separate things, right? People right. think that if we compete all the time, we'll be more competitive. It's often the opposite. Kids often get worse. I know that might sound hyperbolic, but it's absolutely true. If they don't have the skill to begin with and then you force them into a competitive situation, what do you think is going to happen? Right. Right? It's, it's, it's not rocket science. So... As we end up uh, in finishing up this podcast, we hope that it's been of some benefit. We want to summarize a couple things for you. 
Um, in the summertime, organized basketball is fine, but keep it to a minimum. Um, understand that the herd mentality is very strong. No is a powerful answer. No is no. What happens in June and July doesn't matter. What, hap what happens in November is what really matters. So prepare your kids for uh, over that long haul. We have lots of things with basics, of course. We've got summer camps, we've got private training, we've got skills clinic, we have the spring teams, we don't travel. Uh, our practice to game ratio is six to one, seven to one, um, and it's, it's very healthy, and we've generated a lot of good players with this. Yeah, I mean, it's such an important issue because there's so many options out there, especially when the summer hits. That you can, we can, there can be an overwhelming feeling, feeling for kids and players, and, and so, Sometimes it's good just to kind of sit and take a step back and, and just think about what, what's the best for my kid. Well, we look forward to continuing our podcast. We've got a couple other topics coming up. And uh, play well, work hard. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.